Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and this video is all about comparing two online classrooms, Classin and Koala Go. If you're new here, my name is Tim. Thanks for being here. Please click the subscribe button right down below. It means the world to me and it's the best thing you can do for this channel. If you're an online teacher looking for support, my website is also down below and I'm running a free webinar at the moment called The Three Secrets to Launching and Growing Your ESL Teaching Business. I would love for you to join. You can click the link below and find a time that works for you. So if you have been around the channel for a while, you know that I sort of see this as a place of resources. I very rarely hang my hat on one company or one service or one solution for online teaching. And I like to really give the broad spectrum of all the options that are available, whether that's about curriculum, whether that's about companies that you can apply to. But in this case, it's about online classrooms. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about two online classrooms that are quite different from video conferencing apps like Zoom and Vuv and things like that, where you're very limited by what you're actually able to do inside of the classroom once you're teaching. Most of them allow you to do screen sharing, use the chat box and have a sort of blackboard type experience where you can draw and type on. But online classrooms provide so much more. They're really designed to give the teacher the best teaching experience and to give the student the best learning experience by providing the type of educational tools that we're looking for as online teachers. Also, if you stick around at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you if I'm moving to Koala Go and not teaching with Klassen anymore. I only really know my experience. So I'm gonna be talking about my experience. I'm not coming at this as a Klassen expert or a Koala Go expert. I'm simply sharing my experience. And that's what I've always tried to do on this channel. So I hope you appreciate that and uh, let's talk about it. So as I talk about these, I'm gonna be talking about Class In first and then Koala Go. So Class In uh, on their website states that they were established in 2014 in China. Now, I know that they are a well-established company and they do have lots of students and teachers tutoring and teaching online in groups, one-on-one -on -one with schools. I mean, they are really everywhere and lots of teachers are using them to teach their students on. I don't know the specific details on when Koala Go was established. I know that they are a much smaller company and they would have less students and teachers teaching on them, but they are gaining lots of popularity amongst teachers and tutors who wanna teach online, especially with the Chinese market. All right, now let's talk about pricing. Everyone wants to know how much does it cost? Class In has a free version where you can sign up for free and you can teach a maximum of 20 classes per month. This is not 20 classes per student, it's 20 classes in total and their classes are capped at 45 minutes each. So if your situation requires you to teach more than that, then you're gonna to have to look at one of their two payment options. The first one is their, I would call it consumption model, which is kind of a top up system. I think the consumption model might be good for you if you might have two to four students and you, you know, you're not gonna fit into the free version, but essentially it's a minimum of 100 RMB top up. So you top up your account, which is about $15, and then you are going to be deducted per class per student that you're teaching. So the deduction is five RMB, which is about 70 cents per student per hour. They also have a subscription model, which is my preferred model because uh, it just keeps it simple. You're not running out and having to top up. And I think that the monthly rate for that is really reasonable. So the subscription model is essentially based on six months or 12 months. For six months, it works out to be about $128 for six months, which is about $21 per month if you calculate it per month. If you go with the 12 month option, it is $120 for, uh, sorry, $240 for 12 months, which is $20 per month. So somewhere between 20 and $22 per month. Um, and actually the link in the description, if you do sign up with class and gives you the 20% discount, if you don't use a link from somebody to get that 20% discount, then you're gonna be paying 20% more. So Koala Go has a very similar structure minus the consumption model. They have a free trial, which you can use and they also have a subscription, 
which is $21.99 per month. So at the end of the day, they really are about the same if you're going, you know, taking them side by side, subscription for Classin versus subscription for Koala Go. I think that they're both super reasonable and uh, that will give you, you know, un uh, an ability to teach unlimited classes and you won't have to worry about topping up and how much money do you have left and things like that. In terms of onboarding students, meaning how are you gonna get your students registered or into the classroom, things like that, the process is quite different for both of them. And I'm gonna actually insert some videos here to show you the difference. Let's begin with Classin. So with Classin, once you're inside of the Classin app, the way you're going to invite students is by going up here, clicking plus, and you need to add them as a friend. You can do this by sending them a QR code to join your class, or you can send them a link to join. Once they are connected as your friend, then you're gonna be able to create a class for them. So you're gonna click on create class, and you're gonna name that class. So I'm gonna name this class demo class for the sake of this video. And then this is the class situation where you're going to create courses, lessons, upload files if you want, and things like that. So if I go to lesson, um, you can see here that I don't have any lessons and in fact I don't have any students uh, in this classroom so you're going to do that by clicking plus to create your lesson but in order to actually get them into the lesson you need to actually add class members so you click here and then you're just going to add your student from your contacts here once you've done that you're going to go and create the lesson and then it's going to show up on the left hand side here so you can see I've got three upcoming lessons today. So as you can see with class in, it's a little bit more involved than a lot of other platforms. You're not just giving your students a link. They actually have to friend you on the platform and then you have to uh, bring them into the classroom and then they can join on their app, which is super convenient. I must say that when I moved to class in from the other platform I was using uh, over a year and a half ago, it was absolutely seamless because all my students had already used Classin and are using Classin for online classes through the pandemic. So I will say that for Chinese students, Classin proved to be a really good choice at that time. And, uh, you know, I never have really any hiccups with getting students in there and getting them into the classroom. It's super easy. So in terms of Koala Go, very different. You're not creating classrooms and adding students and getting them to register and things like that. You are just giving them a link to your classroom. One link, that's it. All ago, it's a very simple process as well. You're just going to go into the classroom. So this is at the browser URL classroom.teachwithkoala.com. And all I'm going to do to invite a student is click on that button at the top left to invite a student. And it says that it's setting up and it's going to pop up with a link to share with your student. Now, if your student is not in China, you can just send them this link to join. If they are in China, just click that box and grab that link and then close. And then anybody that is one of your students, you can send that link. So it isn't an app, it's web-based. And then when the student clicks that link, they're going to come into your classroom. And uh, you can, uh, you know, just have, you, you'll have the same link for, for all students. In terms of the classroom itself, you essentially have one classroom for all students but you are able to create different activities. And I like to think of the activities as students. So for example, this student is Justin and I'm just gonna load that activity which is going to uh, retain all the slides and all the notes from the last class already in here. So this is just specifically for Justin. If I had another student joining, I would create another student here, click on that and that would sort of be like our area in the classroom that activity is specifically for that student with their lesson, you know, uh, the whiteboard with previous notes on it and things like that. All right, now let's talk about classroom features because I think this is what most of you are gonna wanna know, you know, where do the differences lie? What does each platform provide? And again, I'm gonna preface by saying, I'm not gonna show you absolutely everything. This video would be an hour long and I don't use everything. So I'm gonna show you what I use, that's it. So let's begin with class in, and we're gonna jump over into the class in classroom so that you can see the tools, exactly how to use them and what I use. Okay, welcome to the class in classroom. When you enter the classroom, you and your student are gonna be defaulted up to the top here. 
There is a, a layout feature where you can actually move your cameras around for you and your student. This is the layout that I like, and then I put the lesson on the left. So let's look at how you would uh, put your lessons in. You can use the class in Drive where you can store your lessons and just import that PPT or PDF file right into the classroom itself. So we'll do that with one here so that you can sort of see it um, in action. Let's bring in my, uh, yeah, let's bring in my grade five wonders book. Okay, so then you can make this bigger like that. Um, of course, it has the standard pen tools here, lots of colors and sizes and different things you can do and draw on here um, like this. You can also minimize this and draw right on the blackboard. You can erase things as well with their eraser. You can type on here as well. Usually what I do is I'll screenshot something and I can just drag it right into the classroom immediately. Under their tools menu, there's a lot of tools here that I don't use, but I mainly use the browser tool, which allows me to load like a pre-made curriculum like Crystal Clear. I also use the timer from time to time. If I'm doing a break, I will start the timer like this. There is also a dice roller here that you can use like that. The alternative to the co-browser tool is using what's, what Classen calls EDB files. I do have some EDB files in here that I'm gonna show you um, in my, let's see where it is, EDB file folder. Uh, so let's use the Pokemon one here like that. So it's going to bring in, um, somebody created this and you can you know, actually move things around. You need to get onto this tool here and you can actually move things around. Your student can also move things around. You know, the drawback is that obviously you have to make these or buy these um, for each lesson. So it's um, a little bit of extra work there, but this does allow, in a sense, uh, co-use of the tool to move things around the screen. Whereas if you don't have something like this, then you're going to have to you know, rely on the student just using the pen. You can also remove the pen feature from the student. I can't do that here because there's no student here. Um, you can also give rewards in here as well with the trophy for your student. You can also give rewards, <coughs> excuse me, in class in as well, which is great. So at its basic level, these are the tools inside of class in. I think these are mainly the ones that I use. I use the Blackboard a lot to draw. Um, really easy to remove things. If you've got like a PDF here, like this one, the drawings will stay with the slide. So they'll dis or I should say they'll disappear as you scroll through. But if you're using a web-based PPT file, like with Crystal Clear, using something like the browser tool, then you'll actually have to erase all your markings on the slide before you go to the next one. They, they won't disappear. So that's it, giving you a quick snapshot. Um, of course, there's a chat box as well. You can manage students. There's a lot of things you can do in here with students and the backend dashboard management. I'm not gonna show you that in this video. I just wanted to give you kind of a quick overview of what things look like. All right, so that's Classin's Classroom Tools. Now let's jump over to Koala Go and you can see the differences and you know, based on these screen grabs, you can kind of see like what the experience would be like for the students and for the teacher. I will say that in many ways they're very similar, but in many ways they're very different. So let's check out Koala Go. All right, here we are in the Koala Go classroom. You can see my camera up here on the top left. The student's going to be down below. They also have a chat box feature here, which also includes translation. So if you want to write a word in English and your student is Chinese, it will translate for them to Chinese. So that's really helpful. The sort of interface of the classroom is simple, but has all the tools that you need. You can see here kind of a whiteboard area. Um, you can make things bigger or smaller. So let's look at what the features are. It's got your standard pen. You can make it bigger or smaller. Um, you can change the color. I really like the vanishing pen, which will disappear after a few seconds um, like this. So if you're underlining things, it has an eraser tool. Just have to click and things will disappear. Um, so the, that's the pen feature. You can also upload files here. Uh, you can undo what you've done really easily. You can fit view to content. So if you want to make something bigger, just like that, of course, you can also zoom in and zoom out to make it smaller. Uh, there's also a sticky note here that you can put sticky notes on like that, change the color and things like that. Uh, you can also have text boxes, of course, to write text and like that, change the color as well and things like that. There's also a timer here. So you can start a timer if you wanted to do 
like a five minute timer for something or a 30 second timer, that's also in the classroom as well. Um, so those are sort of the basic features of the classroom. But I do really like the slides, which allows you to um, have your lesson in here. You can also, you know, delete slides, add new slides, and everything is retained from the previous lesson. So I really like that feature as well. Uh, some standout features I think in Koala Go are, of course, the co-browser. So when you click on the co-browser, you're going to open up a browser for your curriculum that you and your student can both interact on and move things around. So, you know, here's a lesson right here from Crystal Clear. And when you get to a slide where things are movable, you and your student can, can move things around. So that's really cool. So let's close out of here and we're gonna quickly open up the playground, which is another great feature of Koala Go and one that I think your students are gonna really love. So it's kind of where Minecraft meets education, where you're able to build things, remove things, um, you're able to have dialogue, you're able to move around the screen in sort of a virtual world. And it does take a little bit of time at first to actually load the playground, but once it's loaded, you will get a better picture of, of what it's like. So here we are in the playground. If my student was here, of course, my student would be there as well. You can move this little guy around using uh, the your your um, mouse or whatever, and you know, space bar to jump, things like that. You can build things, add blocks, objects, images, or stickies. I also really like the focus tool. Like let's say you wanted them to focus uh, right on this wall here, so you can go together right here. You could type things, add things. Um, the sky is really the limit. Your student can also do the same. You can return to free roaming or you can also actually go into first person view, kind of like, you know, the games that our students are playing anyway. So uh, this is really fun. Great way to have a brain break, a break in your class, maybe before your class, but also there's lots of educational ways to use this as well, which I think will be really fun to explore with you and your student. So that's the playground. Qualigo also has a built-in support chat box, which this is just amazing. I mean, if you're having trouble, they've got support from people around the world where you can get help at all hours of the day. And so this is a really great feature as well. In the menu here, you can see that there are some other things. Um, there is a marketplace where you can actually sell resources for teachers to buy. Um, Koala also has invoicing, so you get like a finance dashboard where you can uh, invoice your students and um, lots of other things that I haven't explored, but it's, uh, this is just showing you the tools that I used when I was teaching my student and uh, at a basic level what's available. Okay, so I hope that looking at these features and looking inside, behind the curtain at these classrooms gives you a slightly better idea of what the experience is like. And so I wanna talk about which one should you choose because I think a lot of people see the pros and cons to both and a lot of teachers have very strong opinions about Koala Go or Class In. And that's the beauty of being your own boss and being an independent teacher, right? You get to choose. I wanna be completely transparent. I have probably taught between 600 to 800, maybe a little bit more. Hard to, I was trying to do the math of how many months I've been teaching privately using Class In, but I've taught many hundreds of classes using Class In. I have only taught one class <laughs> using Koala Go, and I taught that class to make this video. I wanted to see what it was like. And so, um, you know, my knowledge of Koala Go is certainly much less than Class In, but I understand the basics and I think I, well, I hope that I did a pretty good job kind of showing some of the similarities and differences and, and what the experience is like. So which one should you choose? I really think it comes down to preference. What I would do is I would get a free trial with both and I would test it out with your students. Um, just go with one that makes sense for you. Go with one that you like and, uh, and that you trust. Now I told you, if you stuck around to the end of the video, I would tell you what I'm doing. Uh, because I have been with Class In for so long, I am continuing to teach on Class In. You know, all my students are on there. It's really easy. I have no hiccups. I find it is just so smooth. It's not perfect. Um, it doesn't give me everything that I want, but I don't think that there's a perfect platform or online classroom out there. However, I am very intrigued by Koala Go. I will say that 
uh, after teaching that one class that I did with my student. It was an hour long class. We had so much fun. Um, obviously the playground is a big hit. It's just a case of figuring out how to use the playground in a way that's more educational and not just, um, you know, killing time or using it in a break and things like that. But it's there and it's really, really fun. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities for that. I love that Koala Go allows you to list things on the marketplace and to sell your own digital products. I think that's really cool. So, you know, there's a lot of enticing things about Koala Go. But for right now, I am going to stay with Class In, but I am exploring the possibility of moving everyone over to Koala Go in the future. I'm still weighing the pros and cons of both. And, you know, I think it's really fun to change things up in your business as well. Like if you've only ever used Zoom, um, if you switch to Class In, for example, you're going to get sort of a breath of fresh air when it comes to online teaching because it is so different. And likewise for me, having always taught on Class In, I think moving to a different platform also just shakes things up a little bit, helps you to become a better teacher, helps you to, you know, explore new things, new ways of teaching. And I think that that's just all great. And I'm so thankful that we have options out there to choose from. You know, uh, back in the day when I first started, it felt like Skype, this is like 10 years ago when I got my first student, it felt like Skype was the only thing out there. And uh, we all know how awful Skype is if you use it. So I'm grateful that we have options. And I hope that this video is helpful to you as you explore these options and figure out what online classroom is best for you. If you've got comments about either one, let me know in the comments, why do you like one over the other? And what are you interested maybe about trying in each of them? So thanks for watching this video. Again, please subscribe if you're not already. It's the best thing you can do for my little channel. Really helps the algorithm and get more online teachers to see my content. So thank you for watching again and happy teaching. Bye.